Thank you very much uh, and good morning ladies and gentlemen of the, of the state. This morning we had a brief ceremony up there where I have taken over from uh, my sister cabinet secretary Aisha Jumwa uh, who is now headed for uh, gender, uh, culture, uh, affairs, uh, ministry and uh, she has handed over to me the ministry of uh, public service. Um, with me here is uh, Principal Secretary Amos Gadesha uh, for the State Department for Public Service. Uh, my also new State Department for Performance and Delivery Management, Mad Madam Veronica Duva, as per the, the assignment of portfolios that was uh, carried out by, that was announced by a section of the President uh, some uh, you know, uh, 10 days or so. Um, I'm delighted to take over this ministry and to drive forward uh, the transformation of our public service and most importantly to ensure that we have got a fit for purpose public service and a public service that adds value to the people of this country. As I've told Madam Aisha Jumo, we have got 900,000 public servants in this country and these public servants, uh, they are supposed to deliver service to 55 million Kenyans. That means we have got roughly around 60 Kenyans that depend on each of us as public servants. If you look at the issue of expenditure, uh, we are now, our recurrent expenditure stands at around 52% of our tax uh, uh, ordinary revenue that means that um, half of our money that we collect through taxes is spent by 900,000 people they are the ones who make decisions to spend and they are the ones who consume 52 percent of our ordinary revenue my question is is that a fair system where one person is consuming revenue contributed by 60 people. The only way out is for public servants to make a decision, a rational decision, a deliberate decision, whether they want to continue to be paying to this country or they want to be part of adding value to these people who contribute the taxes with which they are paid. And if you look at what is happening with utmost respect, the profound respect, I am of the view that we ceased having a public service a long time ago. What we have is public employment. We are just engaged in coming to work because we are gainfully employed by the people of Kenya. And I'm asking public servants in this country to make a choice whether they want to remain as people in public employment, or they really want, as the name suggests, to join public service. So I'm asking all these Wadosi you see here to transition from being in public employment to being in public service. And being in public service entails a lot. You have to do more than work. You know, I'm finding now, nowadays, I thought this is a, a culture that is there with the people who have been in the public service for a long time. But even people, young people, leaving colleges, who find themselves with that privilege of working for uh, in the public service, getting into the same bad wagon of hanging their jackets in the offices, of just doing what is, you know, uh, the hours yeah, required of them, people are not going even one extra mile to work for these people, for the great people of this country. And being in public service is a very big privilege and honor that needs to be reciprocated by people who are enjoying that privilege and deliver more than a job to people who are paying taxes, 52% of taxes that are consumed by these 900,000 people. We really, truly, 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 all the people of this country much, much more. I'm aware 
that uh, you know President Kibaki, the late Kibaki, uh, you know, in his first government, attempted uh, to uh, reform the public service. That effort uh, was abandoned somewhere, uh, you know, midstream. And I intend to pick from where President Kibaki left it by carrying out, you know, a process-based reform of the public service to ensure that we have got a public service that is agile, that is nimble, that is fit for purpose, and that is value-adding to the people of this country. With me here also is a team from several departments. We have got uh, the Director General of the National Youth Service. And let me take this opportunity, although I'll be visiting the NYS next week, and I'll make much more specific uh, pronouncements on the way forward on the National Youth Service. But if you are a young person in this country, my simple advice is don't look for those other lofty jobs you're looking there. The National Youth Service will be the engine of transforming this country. It will be the engine of growing this country. It will be the engine with which, with, for, uh, with which the government of President Ruto is going to use to wake up our agriculture, to revive our manufacturing, to uh, inculcate a, a culture of a service that is based on patriotism and love for this country. We are going to transform radically the National Youth Service. And I can assure you that if you are not in the National Youth Service, you, think, you need to think twice. Gone are the days now when National Youth Service was for people who are, don't have anything else to do in life. We want to use the National Youth Service as a tool of hope, as a tool for you know, uh, inter uh, intervention in various sectors in this country so that we can be able to move forward and move our country forward. You all know the big problem we have in this country of unemployment. It is a na national disaster. It is a catastrophe. We cannot do things the same way again and again and expect different results. And you know, in 2015, where with the first uh, vision that uh, was announced for the National Youth Service by the previous government, unfortunately, when the NYS had some problems, the whole even withdrew away the baby with the bathwater. We now want to separate and the bathwater aside and the baby aside, go back to the basics, go back to the factory settings and ask ourselves, how can we be able to make the National Youth Service a major contributor in take, driving this country forward? In the same manner that we are going to uh, uh, address uh, our Kenya School of Government, you can also expect some major transformation in the Kenya School of Government uh, to assist the country in areas which we don't uh, understand, uh, which are not historically uh, part of our forte, areas like climate change, areas like uh, green finance, and I've had a discussion with Dr. Udeki who is a, a director general there, that, you know, he needs to, you know, to, to, to get ready to, to do some, you know, major transformation of that institution. And actually, it is my view and my hope and my determination that the Kenya School of Government will also be a, our tool for widening our influence, especially uh, around uh, uh, Africa, uh, by uh, not just being the Kenya School of Government, but also by being the Africa School of Government, so that we can be able to train people from uh, Egypt, from Morocco, from Nigeria, from South Africa, and showcase that the best place you can be able to learn about government is uh, actually in the Kenya School of Government, which I hope some years down the line will truly really be transformed into an Africa School of Government. Huduma uh, centers is uh, another area that uh, I want to uh, keep a very close eye on. As you know, um, uh, Huduma is a very uh, popular uh, facility for most Kenyans. I don't know what you're doing, how many transactions? 50,000. Yeah? 50, 50, 60,000 60, transactions every day. And we're only talking about 58 uh, transactions. So what we want to do 52, uh, 52 centers. centers. What we want to do, I want to have a discussion with the Postal Corporation of Kenya, and uh, we have got around 893 post offices. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, ensure that everywhere there is a post office, it's also a Huduma Center. 
because clearly Kenyans have shown that they have got faith and confidence in Huduma Centers. But not just that. Two things. One, we are also going to use our Huduma Centers and interest the private sector to trust us in service delivery, even in services which have got nothing to do with the government. Because clearly, if this is one area where the public sector is doing much better than even the private sector. And so, why not offer our services even for the private sector? His Excellency the President has challenged us on the issue of uh, sustainability, on the issue of not just depending on exchequer. And uh, my first uh, area of uh, that endeavor is to ensure that Huduma Centers do not depend on money from the exchequer. We generate our own revenue. And I'm going to also to have a discussion with the consumer department within government. Uh, you know, people like immigration, driving license and all this. For so long, you've been enjoying this habit without paying. Now there's no more free lunch. Yeah? You have to pay for it. We are going to introduce a fee for service, even for government services, uh, for private sector services, to support our national e-commerce, because Huduma Center can really be the backbone of our national e-commerce uh, initiatives. Uh, let me turn uh, also to uh, my new state department, the state department for uh, public service and delivery management. And, you know, let me say this. Some times back, and I was part of the political system, when there was an outcry about the way uh, uh, government is delivering, a lot of uh, what I call boyfriend, girlfriend, letter writing to each other within government. People writing from this desk to that desk, as if desks are human. And because of that, the previous government had a lot of trouble. Because of all these, so many handoffs, so many Chinese walls, people not working together. And ultimately, service delivery gets affected. Performance gets affected. I am sounding off to everybody who is in public service. Because now, I am also in charge of the performance and delivery management. Please get your act in order. I am going to have a microscopic view of all the projects that are being, being done in this country, both from a horizontal level within our value chain approach, which is the preferred mode of development for the, for the, for the, for the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, looking at our five clusters that, that we follow at the, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, but also looking at counties. And in my previous job, I, I really uh, perfected uh, uh, working with the county government. And I want to assure all the county governments, I want to assure all members of parliament that I am not going to do delivery and performance from Nairobi. And I'm not going to do it from these air conditioned drafty offices to Kutaneko ground. When I go to the county, I want to know why is this health project not delivered? Why is this school not delivered? Why are we not delivering this water? Why are we not delivering these uh, roads? Is it because of, uh, you know, um, a lack of uh, financial resources? Are there better ways that you can be able to raise, uh, you know, uh, government revenue? Because I am, I am saddened by a trend that is emerging, where actually, what I have seen for the last 11 months, the person who has been following up on projects on delivery is His Excellency the President himself. And that's not fair to him. He's supposed to be the head of state and government. We cannot leave the task of ensuring that you are delivering, that you are performing, that you are living up to the commitment that you have made to these people, to the president. I want to uh, relieve the president of the burden of following up even the most minute thing. We are not being fair to the president. And that is why I want to uh, really deploy the government delivery services the State Corporation Advisory Committee, the Inspectorate of State Corporation, and the Performance Contracting Unit to actually relieve the President of the burden of having to find out whether there is a power blackout, whether this road, whether Monarchy is complaining. And you know, we don't have the luxury of time. In another 45 months, we take back our contract to the people. There is hardly any time for bickering. We are running out of time. Monainchi is asking us questions. People are saying they want to see what we, we promised them. 
really it is a very very critical and severe situation and really uh, we can we don't laziness is not an option if people if your vehicle is not moving get out, get out of the way or do a jam kwa barabara so that those people who want to deliver can be able to deliver so i don't have those officers from the government delivery services from the performance uh, performance contracting they are here from the inspectorate from the state corporation but i want to tell them a new sheriff is in town you can allow me but i'll make sure you deliver